one of the persons doesn't want that wall to be there of course both of them don't want the wall to be there but still they maintain that wall over there in order to maintain a very healthy relationship where are the cows if you feel that cows are coming and eating that is not at all possible because there are no cows at all he moves in darkness as it seems to me so that change what has to happen in the society even if the limits are taken out you should know how to maintain your limits Hello everyone. I am Dr. Shalini, professor of English, Vidya Ashram First Grade College, the Temple of Excellence, Mysore. Today we are here to understand one of the poems prescribed by University of Mysore for second sem BCom. Today in the session we are going to understand about the poet first then we are going to understand about the theme of the poem then we'll move on to the summary then the literary devices and if at all there are any new words we are going to understand that also so let us begin by understanding about the author the author of this poem is robert frost he is actually a very famous poet you must have learned his poems maybe from a very uh, young age also okay so he is an american poet and a novelist a very famous person he was famous for realistic depiction of whatever themes he has used in his poem it is actually depicted very realistically that too uh, that is especially the rural life his first book was actually published when he was 40 years old and that he has won four pulitzer awards fine so he is the only person who has won four pulitzer awards uh his, the american magazines actually constantly rejected his works he went on to england and he found his professional success over there so american magazines rejected but he shifted the place and then he found success then american magazines uh, invited his articles and they started publishing so that was the change he made in his life so the road not taken is one of the most famous poems that we have read that is written by uh, robert frost so this was a very short introduction of robert frost so let us move on to the next part that is the theme of this poem so what is there in this poem what does this poem talk about so let us understand so the main theme of this mending wall is actually the difficulty of change in society the social customs and the traditions are very important sometimes in our life in order to maintain good relationships but what frost tells is that he points out the struggle to change the same once they are rooted in the society so this uh, poem actually talks about the uh, limits that one a person should have in the society in order to maintain a very good relationship with the person who is next to him be it a neighbor or be it his friend so this way robert uh, depicts it in a very wonderful way like you have to read in between the lines in order to understand the meaning that is hidden here so uh, the meaning that is ev evident is that the change in society is not possible it is not easily possible but the actual meaning that you have to understand is that it is very difficult for people to adjust so before any problem arises it is better to limit ourselves so let us understand the poem and see what is there in the poem let us start with the summary now something there is that doesn't love a wall that sends the frozen ground swell under it and spills the upper boulders in the sun and makes gaps even two can pass abreast the work of hunters is another thing i have come after them and made repair so here you can see the poet is talking about a wall the wall that is built in between uh, what to say two fields you can say in between the fields of two neighbors so one side is the apple orchard the other side is the pine tree uh, field there fine they both are friends and in between their fields there is a wall that is built so they are mending that so he, the uh, poet is talking about the wall that is there something there is that doesn't love a wall there is some issue or something that is going on which does not like the wall to be there so what happens that frozen part that is when it is uh, snow fall the earth actually the uh, ground below it is frozen so that sends the frozen ground swell under it so the ground that is there that swells so what happens there is a gap that is created at the um, lower part of the wall 
and spills the upper boulders in the sun. So the when this one there is a gap uh, that is created, the upper boulders that are there, they fall because of the sun. The lower part it is uh, swelling but the upper part is dry and so those uh, boulders that is the stones that are there, they fall down due to the heat of the sun. So because of this what happens and makes gaps, so here there is a gap that is created, even two can pass abreast. How much of gap is created? There can be two people who can pass in that gap. So two can pass abreast means two people can pass through that gap is what the poet says. The work of hunters is another thing. So here the hunters also come. So what do they do? There will be some rabbits that are hidden. So they chase that and they keep their dogs very happy. So hunters also come there in order to see what they can gain from those gaps. I have come after them and made repair. So poet is talking about that means one of the friends is the poet here that is the narrator. So he tells that he has come after them that is after the hunters and he has repaired it. That means because the hunters passed there, he has got to know that there are gaps and he has come after they have gone and he has made a repair. Okay. So this is the summary of the first stanza. So here you can see there is no rhyme scheme at all. Fine. There is no rhyme scheme at all because the sentence does not end in the end of the line. It actually continues and somewhere here you can see the end of the sentence. So there is no rhyme scheme here. You can consider that it is written in free verse. So let us move on to the next stanza where they have left not one stone on a stone but they would have the rabbit out of hiding to please the yelping dogs the gaps I mean no one has seen them made or heard them made but at spring mending time we find them there I let my neighbor know beyond the hill. So what happens here? Uh, they have left not one stone on a stone. That means they have not kept one stone on the other stone. Like there is nobody who is there to create that gap. There is nobody who has heard that gap also that is being made. So in those gaps, there are rabbits hidden. Fine, there are rabbits hidden and the hunters chase the rabbits out in order to keep their yelping dogs very happy to please means to keep them happy. So the dogs are waiting to eat the rabbits there. So the hunters are chasing them out in order to keep those dogs very happy. The gaps I mean, now he is turning towards the gaps. The gaps I mean, no one has seen them made. So you cannot see anybody who is making those gaps, who is coming there, sitting and making the gaps there or heard them made. So if there is some gap that is being made, means if there is a stone that is being due to some force or anything, maybe people can hear also if they are being made. They can see if at all from a distance, if at all they are making it during the daylight. But nobody has seen that gaps being made or nobody has heard them also who are making the gaps there. But at spring, so during the spring time, that is while doing, while they come for this mending, that time these gaps are found over there. I let my neighbor know beyond the hill. That means the neighbor is living upside the hill. That is he is up, uphill and this person that is the narrator, he stays at the downhill. So the apple orchard, it has to be straight, right? It, it has to be on the plain land. So he is there and pine trees, it, they are actually all found on the uh, hilly part of the region. So the other neighbor is staying that side. So he tells him, he somehow conveys the message for him that there are gaps. So during the spring time, they both come together and they mend these gaps over there. So this person that is one of the neighbors, he tells the other neighbor that there are gaps over here. So that is what is told here. I let my neighbor know means I let him know that there are gaps over here beyond the hill. That means who is staying beyond the hill. So here also you can see the sentence ends somewhere here. There is a full stop here and a continuation of sentence. So this structure is called as enjambment. So when we come to the literary devices, I'm going to tell this to you again. But just keep a note of this. This is called as enjambment. Okay. The sentence doesn't in the end of the line, it ends somewhere in the middle. And the sentence starts also from somewhere in the middle. So this was the second stanza. Then third one. And on, on a day we meet to walk the line and set the wall between us once again. We keep the wall between us as we go. 
to each the boulders that have fallen to each. And some are loaves and some so nearly balls. We have to use a spell to make them balance. So here you can see there is a lot of hidden meaning here. Fine. And on a day we made to walk the line. So they are talking about they deciding one day and they come together near the wall. So they meet each other. That person, the neighbor will be on his side. This narrator will be on his side of the field only. And set the wall between us once again. Again, they are mending the wall. That, that is, they are making their wall proper. That is, in between them, they are making it proper. We keep the wall between us as we go. So this person doesn't enter that person's field and that person doesn't cross the limit and come to this person's field. They both walk on either side. That, that is, they walk on their side of the fields only. They don't cross each other's boundaries to each the boulders that have fallen to each. Suppose a boulder has fallen to his side, he keeps it back. Suppose a boulder has fallen to his side, he keeps it back. So to wherever the boulder has fallen, they both keep it back uh, from wherever it is to wherever they were. Okay. Some are loaves, some are, uh, the poet actually uh, compares this to how strong those uh, stones are. Some are loaves and some are so nearly Balls. So, some must have lost shape, some must be intact in their shape only. So, few appear like uh, loaves and few appear like balls. That means they have lost shapes. We have to use a spell. They have to use one or the other way in order to make them balance. That is, they have to put the stones back and they have to use their spell. That means they have to make up their mind in order to maintain the limits. So here, they, uh, as you read it, it is only the wall you are going to imagine. But just imagine when you, suppose you have a friendship with uh, some person and you know what are your limits. Suppose you cross the limits. Okay, suppose you don't think about uh, like you are not uh, courteous enough to know how the other person feels bad. So what do you do? Suppose you cross the limits or maybe you use some words that hurt the other person. That means the, uh, the friendship will be gone. The trust will be gone. That same happiness that is there that would have been there before would be gone. Suppose you don't maintain your limits, isn't it? Uh, if you allow some problem to start, Instead of solving it after it starts, it's better you don't let it start at all. Okay, so that is what the poet is telling over here also. See, there is a wall. They both are very close to each other. These two neighbors are very close to each other. But still, they want that wall to be there. Whenever there is some sort of uh, uh, mending and all that is required, they both come together. They, he mends his part and this person his part. That is the narrator's part. So, they both know where to maintain the uh, relationship, how to maintain the relationship. This is not only concerned with wall, it is also concerned with the relationship. Suppose the you let that wall fall down. Suppose one of the persons doesn't want that wall to be there. Of course, both of them don't want the wall to be there, but still they maintain that wall over there in order to maintain a very healthy relationship. How is that possible? Let us understand. Stay where you are until our backs are turned. Till we go back, you have to stay where you are. Means you need to understand your limits. Till our backs are turned. That means till we go from this world, we need to understand the limits that is given to us. We wear our fingers rough with, a, with handling them. We wear our fingers rough. Means we take trouble. We take little effort and make it proper. That is in handling them. Handling them how well you make it proper. That is what he is talking about. Oh, just another kind of outdoor game. They come and mend this. It is a kind of recreation for them. They both meet one day. They talk to each other. They mend it. It is a kind of outing for them. It's a kind of recreation for them. So, it's a kind of outdoor game for them. One on a side. That means both of them will be on their own side. They are not going to cross their limits. It comes to little more. That means they'll be uh, telling like, okay, only this much is there. Only this much is there. Let us finish it off. Let us finish it off. So it is going to be only that much. So little more you do and that uh, relationship will be maintained. So little more effort you give, you can maintain the cordial relationship that is there till date. There where it is, we do not need the wall. So sometimes we they feel that they don't need the wall at all. 
fine as I told before actually they feel that they don't need the wall at all. So this narrator says we don't need the wall at all because he is all pine means the other neighbor who has he has only pine trees and I am apple orchard like I don't need because I have an apple orchard. So apple orchard the apple tree doesn't go and eat up the pine trees. Pine trees doesn't don't come and eat up this apple orchard isn't it. Trees cannot walk they cannot cross the boundaries. So why do we need a boundary? Why do we need a wall to separate our two fields is what the poet tells over here. So uh, here the poet is talking about fields but as I said it is supposed to be considered as the human relationship also. My apple trees will never get across. So these apple trees are not going to cross the limit and go there and eat the cones under his pines. So apple trees are not going to eat the cones that is the pine trees there. I tell him, I told my neighbor that this is not going to happen. Why do you want a barrier there? Why do you want a wall over there? Why don't we let it go? Let it fall. It's okay. Let us not mend it. Our trees are not going to eat up each other's, right? So why don't we stop doing this? He only says, so what does the neighbor say for that? Good fences make good neighbors. So if there are good fences, that means if there is no gap at all in the fence, then neighborship, neighborhood will be very good. So here he is talking about the uh, inner mean, that is the relationship between the humans. So if neighbors have to be good, the limitations what you give for yourself, that has to be good. Do not poke your nose too much into others matters is what he is telling about. Spring is the mischief in me. So according to the narrator, spring is the person who is playing a role over here. And I wonder if I could put a notion on his head. So he is thinking he can make some changes in this spring because spring is causing all these issues. Isn't it? So uh, if there are no seasons, that means there are no external changes, then there is no wall that has to be there. He feels that the wall should not be there. There should be no wall between the fields and he feels that externally there is a problem. So only this wall is being there. Why do they make good neighbors? Isn't it? So he is like, why do they make good neighbors? Why should fen good fences make good neighbors is what the thought of narrator is. He is not able to understand what the other neighbor is telling. He is not able to understand the inner meaning of this person's words. So he is trying to ask, what is this? I just want to put a limit to that spring there. How do they make good uh, neighbors is what he is telling. Where are cows? There are no cows at all here, isn't it? So there are no cows at all, but here there are no cows. Where are the cows? If you feel that cows are coming and eating, that is not at all possible because there are no cows at all. Before I built a wall, I had asked to know. So before he, was, he would build a wall, he wanted to know about this. Okay, so he wanted to ask few questions. What I was walling in or walling out? Am I walling in your uh, pine trees or uh, am I walling out my, your pine trees? So am I keeping you out or am I keeping myself out of your limits is what he wanted to know. That is what uh, you feel right whenever you are looking at a, a person who is in the jail. Okay, so you start feeling right the person inside is inside or you are the person who is inside. So that jail part when you see uh, the same uh, feeling over here also. So here you can see that whenever you see this in the narrator's point of view, he even he feels whatever he feels even you start feeling. Okay, so is it that person who is being pushed or is it I who is being pushed is what he is thinking about. Uh, and to whom I was like to give offense or maybe I am uh, offending somebody is what he is thinking of. So something there is that doesn't love a wall. So there is some part of this nature that doesn't love a wall at all that wants it down. There is something that wants this wall to be down. So there is some issue that is trying to pull this wall down. I could say elves. So for him, that is according to the narrator, he thought that elves are the person, are the uh, people who are pulling the wall down here. But it's not elves. So that is not elves which is actually pulling the wall down exactly. And I'd rather he said it for himself. I see him there. 
So I told him it is elves who are putting, who are pulling the walls down. But I heard him, that is the neighbor saying that it is not the elves who are pulling it down. It is actually some external thing that is actually pulling the wall down is what he is talking about. He talks to himself, that is the other neighbor who is there. He talks to himself that it is not the elves. I see him there bringing stone grasped firmly by the top in each hand. So he is grasping the stones that had fallen down from top. He is bringing everything, uh, holding very tightly in his hand and in each hand like an old stone savage arm, like a person who is in the, who has a stone as an arm and he brings it and he is keeping it back. He moves in darkness as it seems to me. So that change what has to happen in the society, even if the limits are taken out, you should know how to maintain your limits. It is not necessary that there should be a physical barrier in order to maintain the relationship. Even without reason, you need to understand how to maintain the relationship, how not to cross your limits. But that person is not ready to change. He is drawing, he is mending the wall in order to keep the relationship in check. He moves in darkness. That means he is not aware how he can do it. So he is in darkness is what the poet is, that is the narrator is talking about. Means he is very ignorant towards the change in the society is what he says. Not of woods only means he is not talking about the uh, fencing over there. He is not talking about the woods only and the shade of trees. Not only about the fields, not about the external things what you are seeing over here. He will not go behind his father's saying means he is not agreed, he is not able to accept that. Fine, he doesn't go behind his father's saying and he likes having thought of it so well. He says again, good fences make good neighbors. So here he thinks that, that is the narrator is telling that his father had told, that is the other neighbor's father, had told that good fences make good neighbors. But what is the inner meaning of it? The other neighbor is not able to understand. Okay. So the other neighbor is thinking that good fences means he has to have a wall over there. He has to have a barrier over there in order to maintain the relationship. But that is not the actual way. That is not the actual meaning that he has to think of. What is the actual meaning of it? It is like you should know how not to cross your limits. That is what his father had told him. But he has literally thought that there should be fences uh, in between the neighbors and he is trying to mend it. He is trying to build it. Okay, so that is what the poet is telling here. He is not able to understand his father's words that good fences make good neighbors. He is only trying to build fences literally. So that is what he has understood his father's words as. Okay, so this was the summary of the mending wall. So this is the last stanza which we understood now. Now we come to the literary devices. There are few repetitions that are done. That is the words that are repeated in the stanzas over here. So what is the repetition? Repetition means suppose there is a uh, stanza of four lines. There can be words that are repeated in that same sentence. So in the same sentence, if it is repeated, that is the same word is repeated, then it is called as repetition. And yes, that is also a kind of literary device that is used by the poet. Then we come to enjambment. You already know what is enjambment. I have already told you the sentence doesn't end in the end of the line. It ends somewhere in the middle. Then it starts from here again. Okay, so there is no ending in the end of the line. That means not always it is like that. So once it is like this, it may end here only the next one. Okay, so the next line, the, the next sentence may end in the same line here. So this is what is called as enjambment. This is also a kind of literary device that is used by the poet. At the outset, we have only two, uh, this one literary devices. But other than that, we'll have, most commonly we'll have this uh, assonance, then we'll have this consonants, all these, okay? So consonants, it is the repetition of consonant letters, consonant sounds. Assonance is the repetition of uh, vowel sounds, fine. So those are the literary devices that are commonly found here. Okay, so to uh, understand the poem better, we have few new words over here. So the first one is boulders. It is a very common man's language, but still have included. It is a large rock. Fine. So whenever uh, there is a building construction or something, they put these boulders. Okay, big 
this thing that uh, size rock and all so that is called as the uh, boulders and typically one that has been worn by uh, worn smooth by in this uh, poem actually there is something uh, called as loaves and uh, balls okay so uh, whenever there is erosion means uh, due to the um, weather means rain uh, wind sun all these they go smooth fine though they are sharp in the beginning later they become very smooth so that is called that happens due to erosion means the top layer will be uh, taken off then we have abreast side by side and facing the same way means there is a wall in between and the other person will be looking at this person's uh, side and this person will be looking at other person's side uh, it is more or less facing each other but there is a barrier in between and that is called as abreast yelping uh, we have uh, the poet has used it for yelping dogs to make a sudden short high sound usually when in pain so here the yelping dogs means uh, the uh, dogs might be in pain because of hunger or maybe uh, because they are passing through the gap or something they might have uh, been pained there so that time they yelp so that sound is called as yelping and the dogs that do that the it is used as an adjective it is yelping dogs that the uh, poet has used then we have this word notion a conception of or belief about something i have some notion about somebody means i'll have some prejudice prejudice usually will be in a bad manner like in a bad sense but notion is it can be in a bad way or it can be a in a good manner so you have something in your mind so that is called as a notion savage armed in this poem this is uh, used actually it is used to describe the neighbor as old stone savage armed means the neighbor actually will be carrying the large rocks right in order to keep it back on the wall there so he was looking like a person who is old age and he is a savage armed means he has decided to do that somebody who is determined to uh, finish some work or maybe who is decided to do something so here he is carrying a uh, means he has some weapon with him okay so savage arm means somebody who is determined to end something so that kind of a person he has some weapon with him so that is called as savage armed so these were the new words that are there in this poem so we have come to an end of this session now so time to wind up hope you have understood this uh, poem uh, very easily of course it is a very uh, easy poem which is written in a very easy language so i request you to go through the poem you will be understanding it very easily just listen to the lecture then go through the poem you can understand it even better so time for us to wind up the session let us meet again in another more interesting poem in our coming session thank you for your time keep learning see you soon bye bye